Um, some people are saying they haven't heard anything about this local plan still. Why aren't, uh, why aren't you promoting it properly? It has been promoted probably more so than we've ever promoted a, uh, a local plan. Um, thousands of documents have been produced and circulated. We've had a special edition of City Vision which has gone into every home in Coventry. We've been on the local radio. Planning officers and councillors have attended ward forums all over the city and when residents groups want a meeting then we've invariably turned up to be able to give them the information that they want. There's sometimes a view that the council don't really listen to answers anyway so what's the point in consulting? Are, are you really going to listen to the answers? Absolutely. I mean, there is no done deal. We've been working with residence groups for a number of years now in order to get to this stage of the plan. Um, what we're putting forward is some clear scenarios, opportunities for where the city is going to go in the future, and we need to uh, get people's views on whether we've got it right in terms of both the sites that we're talking about, the direction that the city is growing in, the number of people we expect to have have living here. Um, so absolutely it's their city and they need to be involved in talking to us about their reaction to what we're proposing. Why are you planning to build all these homes at all? Um, there's no jobs at the moment and seemingly no prospect of jobs. Um, who's actually going to live in these homes? I was at Warwick University only yesterday where they were talking about their exciting plans for a motor innovation centre which in 2016 will bring another thousand jobs to the city. Uh, we've just been showing visitors from Europe around the new Frygate Centre which will, again will produce thousands of jobs over the next 10 to 15 years. Um, and the fact is that 70,000 people commute into the city every day for the jobs that are already here. Once these houses have been built there won't be any green spaces left. You can only do that once. You, you can't get the green spaces back again. Um, so why are, you, why are you going to be the one to do that? The decisions around what we would do on the land that's in Coventry and adjacent to Coventry is absolutely driven by the number of people who want to live and work in the city. Uh, we've built on Greenbelt before, Orsley Green is a classic case of uh, Greenbelt that's uh, now got houses on, and I think that we can produce a very attractive environment if we get it right. The fact though is that we've got a desperate housing shortage, people can't live in the city because there aren't the houses for them to move to, and what we're proposing in our plan is a way of, of addressing that particular problem. People worry, people worry that we're becoming a suburb of Birmingham. We, we've had headlines this week about combined authorities um, talking about a greater Birmingham. Aren't all these uh, homes being built going to make that even more of a reality? Coventry has been an independent city since before 1889 um, and it will remain so. Uh, the leader has made it very clear that Coventry will remain a unitary authority. The fact that we're looking at how we can work more closely with our surrounding authorities in order to draw down more money and more resources from government is a debate that we're having over the next few months. What I can say is that within this plan there is no proposed housing development that will be any nearer Birmingham than our western boundary at the moment. Um, there's lots of brownfields still in Coventry, why aren't we looking to use all of that properly? The number of empty homes is already falling. Most of those are as a result of deaths and the time it takes to uh, sell a house. We've got a document which is available for anybody who wants to look at it called the SHLA, the Strategic Housing Land Availability Assessment. I've been carrying that document around with me because every site that we proposed to look at is included in there. If people will go online to have a look at that, they will see that most of those brownfield sites are car parks, they're old warehouses and factories, they're very tight sites that will be difficult to develop. Um, we will do everything that we can to use those brownfield sites for housing, but the fact of the matter is that there will be a, there are, or there is a demand for housing where those sites are just not appropriate. The city's roads are already at breaking point. How are we going to cope with all these extra homes and extra people? This is an absolutely crucial point because the reason that we're doing a local plan is to ensure that we are able to match the infrastructure, the roads, the drains, the new schools, the health facilities with the new housing and the new jobs as they come along. If we don't get a local plan that is acceptable to government for whatever reason that is, but crucially if we don't address the housing demand numbers that the government knows um, Coventry is facing, 
then we won't have a valid plan. And what that allows is developers to come in and build whatever they like in, on sites that are probably not uh, sustainable and are not uh, able to cope uh, in the way that we would like it to, them to, uh, to be. So we are working to ensure that wherever there is development, there is proper infrastructure, we can plan the roads before the houses are built and ensure that all of those problems that you quite rightly raise can be addressed before they become a problem. How can you even think about surrendering Coventry's Greenbelt um, for poorly designed cramped homes? We've made it very clear, and this is a personal view of mine, that we can't allow that to happen. That um, the whole point of being able to look at these sites on land that's not previously been developed is to have a highly attractive buildings, not just the houses themselves but the environment that goes with it. Um, one of the things that would happen if we concentrated all of our housing demand on brownfield sites is that we would be looking for families to live in high-rise blocks, six, seven, eight storeys high, with no gardens. We know that families increasingly want some garden space, especially for growing families with children. So all of those things point to the fact that we need more space and uh, that's why we will insist that if there are sites in the green belt that are eventually going for housing, and it's worth emphasising that we anticipate no more than one-tenth of uh, the total amount of green space, uh, green uh, greenfield space in the city over the next, say, 15 to 20 years. That's a very small amount each year. Um, but that will be high quality. There will be uh, design guidelines to ensure that those small boxes that you were talking about don't appear. Um, are you not just giving in to big developers who, who just see the pound signs and want to uh, build wherever they can? There is a myth that uh, it's about developers who make the money. Some developers are also landowners. Uh, our job is to ensure that it's the right type of development for Coventry. Um, one of the things that we can do is by insisting on the provision of proper infrastructure, high quality design and high quality landscaping, it actually ensures that the money that's tied up in that land goes on to improving the housing and improving the landscape around that. We as a council don't get any cash from developers uh, and it's, it's really for us to ensure that everybody walks away from this, developers will be looking to make a profit but not an excessive profit and that we are able to do that by insisting on high quality design and landscaping and the infrastructure to ensure that problems such as you mentioned around congestion don't occur. What would your key message be to the people of Coventry? The plan is absolutely committed to growing Coventry. Um, part of what you were talking about before in terms of a combined authority is because government and any incoming government will see that the growth of the economy of Britain as a whole is going to be the most is going to be most successful if it's based on cities. So they expect to see cities growing, and that's what's driving both the population change and this need for additional housing. Um, we are absolutely committed to Coventry. The idea that we are selling Coventry, that we're joining in uh, and selling Coventry to become just part of Birmingham is not true at all. We're absolutely committed to the city and growing the city, um, but that can't happen just by itself. We've got to get involved uh, in influencing that. And all the people that we talk to, the reason why we're doing this now, and we'll be continuing to talk to the population of, of Coventry and listening to what they say, is because they have to share in this exciting future.